Life is a journey made up of experiences, some good, some bad, some happy, some sad. We may all be different, but we are connected through the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. So tonight, we dedicate this episode to those who have proven that there is not only life, but real fulfilling living after unspeakable tragedy. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. and welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Tonight in our safe space, we're gonna introduce you to a young lady who's rebuilding the bricks of her life after almost losing it at the hands of someone she loved. We invite you to join in tonight's conversation by using the hashtag Sim Soul Sessions. So in this Soul Session, we introduce you to Jodi Ann Gray, whose life as she knew it changed on April 4, 2012, when at seven months pregnant, she was shot in a plot masterminded by her child's father. The story only got more complicated when it was disclosed that the man with whom she was involved was married. Well, I think it's safe to say that since that day, eight years ago, many have had an opinion based on the circumstances of Jodi Ann's story, and some have felt very free to share it, no matter how vile. Despite that, she has also received great support and she is here tonight to tell us how she has been able to move forward with her life since that night. So we welcome Jodi Ann Gray with us tonight. Hello there, Jodi Ann. How are you? Hey, hi, Simone. For some reason, though, I'm not seeing you. I'm not sure why. All right. We're going to work on that even while I talk to you. Thank you for doing this interview. Um, I know many have reached out to you to do interviews. You told me um, you kind of didn't really acquiesce because a lot of people want to drudge up what has happened, get into he says and she says. We're not about that tonight. Um, of course, we have to look at what happened within the context of the fact that it happened because right. it was what took you to where you are now. So let's, let's start there, Jordan, if we can. Um, yes. You were uh, the target of a plan that was reportedly hatched for months, right? Um, yes. Where you were essentially targeted to be killed. You were actually shot while you were carrying your beautiful princess who is, oh my gosh, that's another story for another time. Um, two bullets to the shoulder and one to the face. Eight years later, you are sitting here talking to me and you told me that you have gained more than you lost. First of all, let's talk about the scenario because for many people, that's a, that's a, that's a lifetime movie. That's a weird book, but this is your life, Jodian. How have you been able to reconcile that? You know, let me start by saying it has been a tough eight years. I, I have to be honest. It wasn't easy and it hasn't been easy and it still isn't easy, but it has become more manageable and I'm so grateful to God for that. Um, you know, if anyone had told me um, eight years ago that this would have happened to me, I would have laughed because I would say, you know, this is, this is not even possible. This, this would not ever be my life. But the reality is it was. And, um, you know, I, I had a very, very tough childhood. Um, and, you know, the fact that I was able to propel and, you know, overcome that um, during that time and still become who I was at that time, I couldn't think at any point that it, it would have gotten any worse, but it did, you know? Um, and it, it's just something that happened. And now eight years later, I can say, I, I can probably say that is a part of my journey. That is a part of my story and I'm holding it and owning it wholeheartedly. I love that. You, you mentioned to me that one of the reasons you had to come out on the other side of this is because the plan didn't succeed to kill you physically. And if you had allowed the plan to succeed in killing you mentally, then the person who perpetrated this would have won and you could not allow that. Talk to me a little I, bit about that. I would not. And you know what? It, it really wasn't about who won, who lost. 
it was about just being mentally strong for somebody who is looking up to me, who is totally dependent on me. And that wasn't just my daughter, that was also my grandmother. Um, since birth, it's always been my grandmother and I. She's always been a driving force in my life. So, you know, whenever I look to see, you know, um, push the success or just propel to go on, I always thought about my grandmother. And then I had an addition, which was my daughter. So um, I, I didn't care about my enemies at this point. Right now, it, it's just about what can I do to just allow my daughter to have a wholesome life and wholesome, you know, over the years I've gotten to understand it's not about money or material things. It's just about you being wholesome mentally and physically and spiritually to be able to groom someone with the best values that you can um, at that time. And that was my focus. And it has always been, and I think it will be for the rest of my life. Yeah, it, it took you a little while to get there though, because you, you said it for the did. first three years, you literally thought you were going to go in Insane, Julia. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because you left Jamaica um, the day you were released from hospital yes. with one bag, the yes. same bag you had one on your phone when you got shot, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, yes. Tell me, what, getting to the airport, getting on that plane, landing in, in foreign, what is on your mind at that point about where you're headed? I can tell you this. Um, when I was leaving Jamaica, you know, I was discharged at about 2.30. I remember the nurses came in and they were like, you know, um, you're free to go. You know, we've done everything we 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 were able to do. You're fine. The baby's stable. It's time to go. And I remember my family saying, you know, you're not staying here. And I, I totally agree, you know. And I got shot the Wednesday, um, April 4, the 6th, I was scheduled to come overseas anyway to, you know, do whatever shopping I had to do, you know, preparing for my unborn child. Um, so that ticket was still available. And I said, you know, let us go straight to the counter. We'll change it there. Whatever money it is that we have to pay to change it, I'm leaving. And um, it was painful for me because, one, my grandmother was on her way to the hospital at the time um, to come and visit me. So she had no idea that I was leaving and oh, no. I couldn't tell her because I knew what that would do to her. So I literally left like a thief in the night. So she just thinking about her was one thing. And then I drove to the airport with the police, um, my stepmom who was, has always been instrumental in my life and my sister. Now for people who truly know me, my sister is literally my life, my youngest sister. Um, She's like my daughter. Everybody in Jamaica thinks she's my daughter. And, you know, she was also there with me when I was leaving. And those two persons at that time, it was so heartbreaking to even think about leaving them. Like even my grandmother, when I thought about her, I was on the plane and I thought about her and I was like, there, I don't know a life without my grandmother. Like I cannot live without my grandmother unless I have to accept that she's dead. It's just always been both of us. And I, I just didn't know how to live with her. So I, without her, I was on the plane. I was thinking about my sister, thinking about my grandmother, thinking about how the hell am I going to make a new life in this place? Even though I know I had family, I, I mean, everything I knew, everything I loved was in Jamaica. Yeah. Well, and I had to just walk from all of that. Well, we're going to talk about what you walked into when you when you walked away from Jamaica and how you managed to get over onto the other side of those um, the post three year um, trauma additional trauma that you that you suffered um, we're going to take a break and we'll come back with Jody Ann and her story on the other side too. Welcome back, everybody. As we continue our conversation with Jodi Ann Gray, who survived a horrific attack on her life eight years ago. Jodi Ann, we're back with you. So we're talking about when you left Jamaica. First three years were rough, but you said you were able to, to get past it. You had to depend on family and friends who were there for you in spades. But you had a hard time with that reality because you said that's not 
who you are as a person. Talk me through that. So um, the first three years were extremely rough. Um, I must say, I've, my family and my friends, like, I don't know. I don't know how I would have survived without them. And it's so funny. There's nothing I wanted that they were not ready and willing to give to me. But I'm someone who I just love to do a lot for myself. Whatever I can do for myself, I do for myself. And even though I know it was never really a burden on them, I just felt mentally like it was a burden because one of the characteristics that I love about myself is that I'm very independent. I try to do everything I can on my own. And if I can't do it on my own, I try to ask for help to do it and then take over. Right. So, you know, when I felt like I wasn't in control, especially financially, it, it made me sad. Um, but I was grateful that I had them, but I was still willing to do whatever I could to help myself to maneuver through these early years that yeah. were just really rough. You talk about your support and your friends. Um, we reached out to a few of them. Take a look at this, Julianne. Hi, Jodie. Oh my gosh, 15 years of friendship. Jodie, I just want to take this opportunity to tell you how proud I am of you. Jodie, I know you've been through a lot, but you have never allowed this to stop who you are. Keep going. And I encourage you to be the strong, energetic, vibrant person that you are. I will always love you and I'll always be there for you. Hello, Jody. Jody, I'm longing to see you one. When you come in. Hey, Jody. Surprise. Well, girl, I'm very, very proud of you. I am proud of where you've come from, how far you've progressed. I'm happy for how you're raising your daughter. And I'm just super duper proud of all the strides you've been making. I'm happy to have you in my life and I just hope that we continue making big strides. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Guess who it is? Hey girl, we just want to come on and say that we love you. We appreciate you. We are so happy for the person that you are. The crazy, fun, loving Jody. And if nobody's ever met you, they need to know who you are because you're super duper awesome and an amazing mom, even great friend, hello. <laughs> and we love you so much and we're super proud and we can't wait to see the big things that are coming up for you Jody, I just wanted to send a shout out to tell you how great and proud I am of all your accomplishments this far like you are such an amazing and strong woman you're stronger than you know and you know what we are about to partake in another part of this journey and I am going to be here till the wheels fall off. Jodie and I know we are real friends and you know, kind of advisor. She called me her, her second dad and I guess she could be the daughter I never had. So I'm so proud of the progress she's making and how she's determined to really move forward. She has a story to tell and it is a story that no matter what you can be successful with just some hard work and determination. My mom's very nice. She's very nice to me. If I ever wanted another mom, it would be her. She's my favorite person in my world. That helps me through good and hard times. Love you, mommy. I'm very, very proud of you. Love you, girl. I love you, Judy. You are blessed and content to be who you are. Bye, my darling. I love you, baby sister, and I can't wait to see you soon after this corona is all over. Love you. To Jodie and love you like cook food. Keep on being you and Ninja Live all day. Bye. Okay. Jodie, are you okay? I'm holding it together. That's what I do. I I'm holding it together. Y'all uh, really get me on this one. Um... Boy, my producer got me too with, with your, your daughter, I won't, I won't lie. Um, but, but there's somebody else who wanted to be here for you tonight. Um, her name is Anne Jeffrey. Do you know her? You know that girl? That's my sister. Okay, somebody has to talk. I, I wouldn't cry. <laughs> I okay. knew this was going to happen. It's okay. Yes. It's okay. 
it's okay because this is this is what love looks like um she's she she told me um jody that it's like god put a circle of your mm -hmm. friends uh, around you when what happened happened and they've <coughs> helped you move forward so much so she told us and that you were so instrumental in her healing that you told you to go and do your psychology degree yes and you are now doing your psychology i'm doing my degree. psychology degree yeah yeah was inspired not only to help Jody, um, but to help others. Um, the journey, it, 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 it has been a tremendous journey. And we're not here crying because we are sad. We're here crying because it's another day. And we're here giving thanks because we know where we're coming from. We saw those days when she was helpless and she felt hopeless. And we took one day at a time, and we are here. And I love you. One day at a time. That's all we took. Yes, and there were days when, and there were days when she was not even sure about the day. And I said, "Come on, Mama, one step, mm -hmm. one step at a time." And when you yes. look at her now, I envision this because I saw the strength that she has, and she just needed encouragement and she just needed somebody to be non-judgmental and just be there for her just to hold her hand and say no this is not it mm -hmm. this is not the end rise up and I on a daily basis I would say to her rise up rise up this too shall pass just hold on she did, hold she did on. come in for a lot of judgment a lot of judgment but you did talk her through that I had to yeah. because the judgment was not coming from afar it was coming from very close persons that she thought would have been there for her and that was not so so Jody Ann, what do you want to say to Anne and the others who were there for you and let me tell you when it comes down to Anne you know I, I had a hard time with the pregnancy even before the event itself it was it was very heartbreaking for me um, and then Anne was there for me. When the incident happened, Anne was there for me. And when it happened, I told Anne, I said, Anne, there's no way I can make it through this. Like, mm. it's not possible. I cannot do it. And Anne said, yes, you are going to do it. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you're going to look and you're going to look back and say, boy, you know, this is where you are. And I remember she always used to tell me, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. You understand and let me tell you she, she always said let me tell you god have a plan mm -hmm. for you sure, and just remember he's going to cross for you mm -hmm. he's going to give you hope and he's going to give you a future and i remember when she always used to tell me no feeling is permanent mm -hmm. no matter if it's good no matter if it's bad it's not permanent so you may be feeling this way now but you're not going to feel like this forever and she said i know for a fact if god don't take me out of this world i'm going to live to see a hole up your head and propel and you know I, i'm so grateful to her i'm so grateful she's she's such an important part of not only my life but my daughter's life my daughter loves her so much yeah. and not only her to all the people who are there let me tell you my aunt, my grandfather, my grandmother, even though she couldn't be here for me, like physically, she was always cheering me on, you know? And um, there are so many people. When I tell you, Eddie's right here. And, yeah. you know, Eddie, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you, I remember days I would just, when I met Eddie, um, I was asked to give him a call because someone felt like, you know, us meeting would be a good team. And I say, you know, afraid to call him, you know, afraid to call him. I don't know who is who, I don't know who to trust. And I remember the lady said to me, Eddie is a good person. Call him, tell him, I tell you to call him. And when I call Eddie, Eddie just said to me, listen, you're going to be a part of my team. I don't know what I'm going to find for you to do yet, but you're going to be a part of my I team. And we're going to work together. All right, lady, we have to take a break. We have to take a break, yeah. Jody. We're going to come back and put a cap on it. Eddie Edwards is who she's okay. speaking mm -hmm. of, by the way. Um, promoter of the Grace Joke Festival, which is ironic because Grace is our sponsor and that just came together <laughs> and we didn't even try. Um, but we have more to come on Sim Soul Sessions. Going to put the cap on the program with Jodie Ann when we come back. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Don't leave.
Jennifer Jodian as we put the cap on tonight's program. Um, Jodian, you say you've you've often wondered when you look back how you ended up here. How did my life end up here? Um, what would be for you as you think back the key takeaways of the last eight years of your life? We spoke about this. You said one of the things is that you just cannot give up. You can't. You can't. And you know, determination is key. Like I was, even though there are days when it was very hard, I knew that I had to fight. And, you know, even if it's not for yourself, you have to find a driving force. And my driving force, forces, I should say, was my grandmother and my daughter. I had to fight. I had to fight. And, you know, I knew that it would one day be easier or you know manageable and and that's where i am right now which is was my next question for your for your the people who are rooting for you people who want to know how are you now are you where are you now in that journey how do you feel um do you have a lot more work to do tell tell us well i tell you this i i am much better than i was eight years ago that i can tell you i remember in the first couple of years you know I would literally infiltrate every negative thing that people had to say. And I, I felt a need to always want to tell my side of the story, defend myself, you know, this is not true. And why, you know, why would you be so evil, that sort of thing? And no, I, I, I don't care. I've got, I can't believe I've gotten to the point where I don't care. Um, I am focused on the people who are there for me, who are supporting me, who if I need something, I know I can easily go to them because they are my support group. Um, anything out of that, I can't, or anything outside of that group, I don't control. Um, and I've just been able to, you know, just be firm and just focus on exactly where it is that I want to be and what it is that I need to do. And it's a situation of, you know, sink or swim. Mm -hmm. And I was going to swim. Mm -hmm. So you've gained more than you lost. I've gained much more than I lost. I mean, I remember the years when I was, I was unemployed for three years and I felt like I was going to die because I don't know what it is like from I've been able to work, not to work. And um, it was hard for me. But, you know, one of the things that I realized is that I was focusing so much on material things and focusing on, you know, what it is that I think I should have that I wasn't able to, able to even see what I had. Like being able to raise my daughter for three years um, you know, not having to work for those three years and just be there for her in three of the most important years of her life was a blessing. And it was after that I was able to see that, yeah. you know, um, sometimes in 2020. Yes. 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 All right, girl, we're going to close with our affirmation. If you would just affirm with us, I would love that. So let's set the tone um, for that to happen. Dim the lights a little bit. Um, and Jodie, I, I would love your participation in this as much as you can. Um, so guys, raise your hand with me if you've ever been so close to the bottom that you didn't think you could ever in this lifetime get back to the top. Yeah, raise your hand if you've ever uttered the words, I, I, I can't do this, I'll never get through this, this is just too much. Raise your hand if something has rocked your world so badly that you were certain that this would be the thing that did you in. Well, where are you now? You're still here, right? And even if, as you are watching this, you are still at the very bottom, the good news is that there is nowhere for you to go now but up. Sometimes that may just mean being able to get through a day at a time until the fog starts to slowly lift and you can see beyond that. You have to fight through some bad days to earn the best days of your life. And although it may feel like more than we can bear sometimes, if we remain steadfast in faith, the right circle of support, it can and often does get better. And it may take weeks, months, or in Jody's case, years. And my goodness, it is tiring. But as Jody said, the key takeaway is knowing that you are allowed to scream and you're allowed to cry. You just can't give up. And in time, hopefully, we can find the will to keep going and the strength to prove to ourselves that we have the tools to turn trial and tragedy into triumph. So tonight we affirm, I am equipped with the strength I need from the source I need to not only get through the darkest moments, but to survive and to thrive. So food for you for our show tonight. Thank you, Jodianne Gray. 
Bless Thank you, you Jodi Ann Gray. Bless your princess, you, Jodi Ann Gray. Love Thank and you. light and success and joy and peace be yours. Thank you so much. You're so Thank welcome. You. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. And thank you guys for sharing with us in our safe space. Next week, we'll be here with another amazing story about the absolute power of the human spirit. I'm getting goosebumps just, just thinking about it. Until then, every blessing. And remember to count your blessings. Night, everybody.